from the water, superior from inferior. The Mayim are the waters. Hey, friends. Sorry, this one. Let me um, sexual water. show you this paint gun of mine. Wound. Those waters from which life... I think this is a little bit too loud. Shamayim, which is usually translated as heaven, is the Mayim plus the letter Shin. Even though that's some pretty good stuff. Let me put that on pause. Okay, anyways. Um, this is a Seda. Let me see if this light... Uh, I think I don't need the light. Okay. <clears throat> This gun right here, I've had probably six years. Um, this guy owed me some money, so he paid me with this. Wasn't that much. Um, meaning how much this gun costs new, he basically ripped me off. So, but he's the kind of guy he may be watching this video, but he may not be, you know. Dude, you know, I wish y'all the best. You just can't rip people off. So, but anyways, um, where I'm going with this video is I want to just commend the Germans for making such a fine, even though this is, this is a, a, a mid, I think it's a mid-level gun maybe mid to lower level professional gun. It's way better than the Chinese stuff, the Harbor Freight stuff, but it's still very, very good. Even some of the expendable supplies or the expendable parts last pretty good. Now the needle here, it's showing some wear marks here, right there in that collar, but I'm doing a very invasive cleaning today um, and I use stirrers you know these old paint stirrers and they're, they're really good you chop them up and you use them and you probe in to areas that usually never get clean like down here you know in the um, in the grooves right there on the uh, air mixture or in the um, um, the ratio mixture right here, I mean, you know, the grooves there, you know, the paint gets in there, but the wood thing does a really good job of cleaning it out. And I'm really doing an invasive gun cleaning today. That part right in here, I, I can't remember how to take that out. I can't remember quite how to do that. So if anybody out there knows how, I'd appreciate it if you let me know. And it's still a little dirty down in there because the primer I'm, I've been running through it is the Smart brand Direct to Metal. And that's what's on this Mustang Fastback right now. It's kind of like a, it's t from, from a really, how do I say it? I don't want to say crude, but I want to say educated, but I want to say layman's. I think layman's term is the best way to say it. From a layman's point of view or perspective, this primer is, has the, characteristics of a self-etch primer because it goes on quickly and dries quickly but it has the similar qualities as epoxy um, but it's a whole lot cheaper than epoxy and I found that I can weld through this primer this smart brand direct to metal primer pretty well and as you can see on this Mustang, this is this is uh, the 65 Fastback. All these areas here were rotted out. I dug them out, had the car, uh, we re-blasted the, uh, the entire automobile, you know, all these areas that were exposed up in here underneath the roof, that was all rusty and 
you know, knowing me, if you know me and know my videos, I like to really dig deep in a car to really root out the rot, root out the problems, and you get a better car. It's, it's a very invasive process. It's a very cost, um, uh, the cost is high to do this, but you know, the end result, you have a car that's gonna last longer, much longer than it lasted now. This is a 50, this is a 55 year old automobile. This is unbelievably old. Now this will outlast me. It really will. It'll probably last another 100 years easily or more. So you people that maybe 100 years in the future watching this video, <laughs> you know, I, I think that's an exciting time. That's an exciting prospect to think about people 100, 200, maybe even 300 years in the future watching this video right here of and other videos of this time and era. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to go off on all these tangents. It's fun to do that. It's fun to just think about stuff. But let's go back here to the Seda gun. I just mainly the point of this video is just to show you the... Um, how do I talk about it? Um, some of the steps needed to really get it clean. Now, if you look here, this little green thing, I don't even know what that is called. I think it's just an identification collar and it goes right in here. Some of them are blue, some of them are green, some of them are gray, I think, I think, I don't know, but that's interesting. Is that a QR code on the uh, gun? Hmm. I don't know. Never noticed that before. It might be a QR code. But this is broken. And it just cracked, I think, through a lot of just wear. I don't know why. Maybe it just got dry and brittle and cracked. So I'm going to try to glue that. I looked on Amazon for this, but I can't find it. So I might have to go to the dealer, I don't know. It's just a lot of work just for a stupid collar. But this green, this spring right here, that sucker is a lot of dirt in it. A lot of uh, debris, I should say, paint residue. And that goes right in here, okay? That goes right there inside. And then this brass collar right here goes on top of it and it is torqued down. I don't, it's not torqued very much, but it is tightened. Um, this cap is not the original one because it's got blue. I think the blue was a bigger I think, I don't remember, but it, the blue is a different size cap. This one I got a little bit bigger, this is a 1.6. So you get 1.6. I think the stock one is a 1.4, but since this gun is only used for priming, and I really don't even prime that much anymore because I'm just too dirty over here. And I've got the guy over there that does painting and priming. So, but uh, yesterday, you know, I set out and I got that thing completely primed um, and it's ready to be completely worked on now so but I just want to give the kudos to the Germans for making some really good products um, and of course you know I'm partial to the German stuff and I've got two Porsche 928s so anywho nine minutes is plenty of time for talking about nothing so peace be good bye bye